The problem is that we are divided against each other and the algorithms, now we have the silicon curtain, dividing not just China from the US, but also if something ultimately destroys us, it will be our own delusions, not the AIs. Why do people fight? Because of different stories in their minds. The problem is not with the humans. If ChatGPT is the amoeba, how would the AI Tyrannosaurus Rex? It's funny because you mentioned, you kind of alluded to the fact, jokingly, that we might just be in like a simulation. It was one of you like, well, well maybe we're just in a simulation, yeah, but... could be. And, and it's funny because in a world of AI, I think <laughs> my belief in that as a possibility has only increased. Yes. That this is in fact just a simulation because I've watched us go from when I was born, not really having internet access, <laughs> to now being able to kind of speak to this alien on my computer that can like now do things for me and having virtual reality experiences, which are sometimes quite indistinguishable where my, my you know, I fall into the trap of believing that I am inside Squid Games because mm. I've got this headset on and you play it forward and you play it forward and you play it forward and you imagine any rate of improvement, then I hear the, the arguments for simulation theory and I go, do you know what, probably, if you play this forward a hundred years, hmm. <laughs> you know, like at the rate we're on, at the rate of trajectory we're on, then we will be able to create information networks and organisms that don't, in like a laboratory or in a computer, that hmm. don't necessarily realize yeah. they're in the computer. Especially with like what's going on with bio. It's, it's, it's already happening to some extent. You know, these information bubbles that more and more people live inside them, mm -hmm. it's still not the whole physical world. But you get the same event and people on, say, different parts of the political, political spectrum, they just can't agree on anything. They live in their own matrices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the... the, the when, when, when the internet came along for the first time, the main metaphor was the web, the World Wide Web. A web is something that connects everything. And now the main metaphor, which is uh, uh, the, the, the simulate, this simulation theory is, 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 is representing this new metaphor, the new metaphor is the cocoon. It's a web that turns on you and encloses you from all sides so you can no longer see anything outside yeah. And there could be other cocoons with other people in there, and you have no way to get to them. Yeah. No, nothing that happens in the world can connect you anymore because you're in different cocoons. You talk about a couple of um, big dangers you see with the algorithms and AI and the sort of shift and disruption of information. One of them is this alignment problem, hmm. which um, how would you explain the alignment problem to me in a way that's simple to understand? So the classical... Uh, kind of example is a thought experiment invented by the philosopher Nick Bostrom in 2014, which sounds crazy, but, but you know, bear with it. Uh, he imagines a super intelligent uh, AI computer, which is bought by a paperclip factory. And the paperclip manager tells the AI, your goal, the reason I, I bought you, your goal, your, your entire existence you're here to produce as many paper clips as, as possible. That's your goal. And then the AI conquers the entire world, kills all of the humans, and turns the entire planet into factories for producing paper clips. And it even begins to send expeditions to outer space to turn the entire galaxy into just paper clip production industry. And the point of the thought experiment is that the AI did exactly what it was told. It did not rebel against the humans. It did exactly what the boss wanted. But of course, it was not the, the strategy it chose was not aligned with the real intentions, with the real interests of the, of the human factory manager, who just couldn't foresee that this will be the result. Now, this sounds like outlandish and ridiculous and crazy, but it already happened to some extent, and we talked about it. This is the whole problem with social media and user engagement. In the, the very same years that Nick Bostrom came up with this thought experiment in 2014, the managers of Facebook and YouTube 
they told their algorithms, your goal is to increase user engagement. And the algorithms of social media, they conquered the world and turned the whole world into user engagement, which was what they were told to do. We are now very, very engaged. And again, they discovered that the way to do it is with outrage and with fear and with conspiracy theories. And this is the alignment problem. When Mark Zuckerberg told the Facebook algorithms increase user engagement, he did not foresee and he did not wish uh, that the result will be collapse of democracies, wave of conspiracy theories and fake news, hatred of minorities. He did not intend it. Uh, but this is what the algorithms did because there was a misalignment between the, uh, uh, the way that the algorithm, the goal that, that was defined to the algorithm and the interests of, of human society and even of the human managers of, of the companies that, that uh, are deployed these algorithms. And this is still a, a, a small scale disaster because the social media algorithms that uh, uh, created all this social chaos over the last 10 years, they are very, very primitive AI. This is like the, the, the amoebas of, if you think about the development of AI as an uh, evolutionary process, for this is still the amoeba stage. The amoeba being the very simple... The very simple life cell. forms, the, the beginning, like, like the single cell life form. We are still in evolutionary terms, organic evolution. We are like billions of years before we will see the dinosaurs and the mammals or the humans. But digital evolution is billions of times faster than organic evolution. So the distance between an AI amoeba and the AI dinosaurs could be covered in just a few decades. If ChatGPT is the amoeba, how would the AI Tyrannosaurus Rex would, like, would look like? And this is where the alignment problem becomes really disconcerting. Because if so much damage was done by giving kind of the wrong goal to a primitive social media algorithm, what would be the results of giving a misaligned goal to a T-Rex AI? in 20 or 30 years. So what's the solution? If I had to, you know, having read your book, brilliant book, Nexus, A Brief History of Information Networks from the Stone Age to AI, what is the solution? <laughs> how, do um, we, how do we stop the alignment problems, us all becoming paper clips, the social chaos, <laughs> the misinformation, <laughs> the, the silicon curtain, as you talk about in the book, how do we stop these things destroying our world? Is there, is there hope? Are you optimistic? I mean, the, the key is, 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 is cooperation, is connection between humans. I mean, the humans are still more powerful than the AIs. The problem is that we are divided against each other and the algorithms unintentionally are increasing the divide. Again, this is a, the oldest rule of every empire is divide and rule. This was the rule of the, of the Romans, of, of the British Empire. If you want, want to rule a place, you divide the people of that place against one another, and then it's easy to manipulate and control them. Uh, this is now happening to the entire human species with AI. That just as we had kind of, you know, the, the Iron Curtain in the Cold War, now we have the Silicon Curtain, dividing not just China from the US, but also Democrats from Republicans, also one person from another person, and all of us from the AIs, which increasingly make the decisions about all that. Uh, we still have the power for, I don't know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, to, to, to make sure it doesn't go in dystopian direction. But for that, we need to cooperate. Are you optimistic? Um, I try to be a realist. I mean, the last few, I mean, I just came from Israel and I saw a country destroying itself for no good reason whatsoever. And it's a country that just pressed the self-destruct button and for no good reason. And it can happen on a global scale. What do you mean and press the self-destruct button? It's not just the war between Israelis and Palestinians, but uh, Israeli society 
turning against itself, greater and greater division and animosity. And uh, it's, it's like a, a, a dark hole of, uh, uh, of, of anger and of violence, which is sucking more and more people in. You know, all over the world, you now feel the shockwaves from this dark, dark hole in, in the Middle East. And there is no good reason. There is no objective reason. If I'll say something about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. There is no objective reason for it. It's not like there is not enough land between the Mediterranean and the Jordan River that people have to fight for the little land there is, or that there is not enough food. There is enough food for everyone to eat. There is enough land to build houses and, and hospitals and schools for everyone. Why do people fight? Because of different stories in their minds. They have these different mythologies that God gave this whole place just to us. You have no right to be here. And they fight over that. And uh, uh, this is a local or regional tragedy. It can happen on a global scale. Again, if, if something ultimately destroys us, it will be our own delusions, not the AIs. The AIs, they get their opening because of our weaknesses, because of our delusions. Yuval, thank you so much for writing a book. I think this book is one of the most well-timed books um, that I've ever come across because of everything that's happening in the world right now. And it really helped me to understand that the problem isn't necessarily me versus you if you're on the other side of the aisle. The problem is information, the networks of information that we consume, who's controlling those networks of information. Um, that somebody's how... manipulating us to be on different sides, not just to be on different sides, but to see each other as enemies. Mm -hmm. And right now that's a person, but it might not be. As soon it might not be a person, no. <laughs> and understanding that I think helps us focus on the root cause of, of issues that are sometimes hard to identify, i.e. I think the problem is my neighbor. I think it's that person with different color skin. But actually, if you look one level deeper, it's the information networks and what I'm being exposed to that are brainwashing me and creating those stories. And as you talk about in your previous book, stories are ultimately what are running the world. And it's, and it's this wonderful, the Nexus is just a wonderful book at a wonderful time that helps us to access um, this knowledge of the power of information and, and how it impacts democracy and relationships and society and business and everything in between um, in a way that I hope will lead to action. And I think that is something to be optimistic about. Hmm. Yeah, and ultimately, I think most humans are, are good. They're good people. Yeah. When you give people bad information, they made bad decisions. The, the problem is not with the humans, it's with the information. This discussion highlights how our growing dependence on technology is shaping not just our reality, but also our perception of it. The metaphor of cocoons is particularly striking as it emphasizes the danger of becoming trapped within echo chambers where we are only exposed to viewpoints and realities that align with our own. In our personal lives, this conversation encourages us to be more mindful of the ways we consume information and interact with technology. It serves as a reminder to actively seek diverse perspectives and resist the comfort of ideological bubbles, so we don't lose touch with a broader, more objective understanding of the world. Additionally, the idea of simulation theory can prompt us to question the nature of reality and consider the ethical implications of the virtual worlds we are creating, both for ourselves and for future generations. This discussion serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of ethical oversight in AI development. It urges us to think critically about the goals we assign to AI systems and how those goals can unintentionally lead to societal harm. In our personal lives, we can take these insights as a call to be more mindful of the technology we use daily, particularly social media, and recognize how algorithms may be shaping our behaviors and perspectives without us fully realizing it. On a broader level, it stresses the need for continued public discourse in regulatory frameworks to ensure that AI, as it becomes more advanced, remains aligned with human interests and values. By staying informed and advocating for responsible AI development, we can help mitigate the risks of misalignment and ensure that AI is used for the betterment of society. The key takeaway from this discussion is that cooperation and critical thinking are essential to counteracting the dangerous effects of misaligned AI 
and the growing influence of misinformation. In our daily lives, we can take a more active role in questioning the information we consume and recognizing that algorithms are often designed to deepen divisions by exploiting our emotional responses. By understanding that the root problem lies in the manipulation of information, rather than in our neighbors or those with differing views, we can work towards building more constructive conversations and relationships. This discussion also highlights the importance of staying informed and engaged with ethical conversations around AI development. As Harari points out, the future of AI could bring even more powerful and potentially dangerous systems if we don't address the alignment problem now. By advocating for transparency, accountability, and responsible AI use, we can ensure that technology works in harmony with human values, rather than exacerbating societal divides. In short, the solution lies in fostering cooperation, promoting better communication across divides, and ensuring that we retain control over the narratives that shape our world. If we focus on these actions, we can mitigate the risks of AI and safeguard our future.